हेलो व्यूवर्स आई एम जहूर इस्लाम एंड यू आर वाचिंग मी ऑन माय यूट्यूब चैनल जहूर इस्लाम ऑफिशियल टुडे द टॉपिक ऑफ माय लेक्चर इज लाइपोसोम इनकेप्सुलेशन सो व्हाट इज लाइपोसोम्स लाइपोसोम्स कैन बी डिफाइंड एज दीज आर द पॉसिबल लिपिड बाय लेयर व्हिच कंटेनिंग द एक्वियस कोर मीन लाइपोसोम्स इज कंपोज्ड ऑफ पॉसिबल लिपिड बाय लेयर देयर इज अ डबल लेयर ऑफ पॉसिबल लिपिड्स व्हिच कंटेनिंग द एक्वियस कोर ऑलमोस्ट ओवर 50 इयर्स अगो <clears throat> the researchers discovered that these spheres could be filled with the therapeutic agent <clears throat> therapeutic agents in the form of drug coat and used to protect and deliver these agents into the body and even into the specific cells of the body <clears throat> liposomes have been demonstrated to improve the delivery of encapsulated goods you can see here the structure of the liposomes which consists of phospholipid layer so the first one is head and the second one is tail so the head is usually composed of hydrophilic region which is water soluble and and the tail is composed of hydrophobic region which is lipid soluble so there is a double layer of hydrophobic hydrophobic and hydrophilic regions you can see here the smiley and which the drugs they are conjugated on on their surface this is the structure of liposomes and you can see here these are the phospholipids bilayer pls phospholipids bilayer the double layer and the red color which you can see these are cholesterols this one is hydrophobic drug and this one is hydrophilic drugs one is water soluble and the second one is lipid soluble you can see here the liposome part drug delivery which contain the drug cores the aqueous the aqueous space or the aqueous core which is embedded here so this one is dna and this is lipid soluble drug bilayer and bilayer mean two layers of the phospholipids the lipid bilayer and the the drug is the drug crystallized in aqueous fluid and this one as you can see here in this sketch the protective layer against the immune destruction so liposome for the drug delivery liposomal formulation since the first liposomal pharmaceutical product it was for the first time launched in 1995 that is called doxils so doxil it was the first pharmaceutical product that was approved in 1995 there are now several liposomal drug formulations available in the market so initially it was a big challenge to formulate the liposomes from the lipid bilayer but with the passage of time and development the doxil it was the first agent first pharmaceutical product which was approved in 1995 and now it is there are many different liposomal drugs formulation they are available in the market most of them most of them they have to be administered intravenously due to degradation of the lipids in the gastrointestinal tract so most of the liposomal formulation they are available in the form of injections so it can be administered to the patients due to degradation of the lipids especially in the gastrointestinal tract so however some recent formulation such as irikes can be subcutaneously injected or inhaled in the form of aerosols it means that liposomes can be formulated in different ways apart from the broadened range of drugs being investigated for the liposomal formulations the new strategies such as environmental sensitivity and combination therapy have been applied to the development process to achieve the better efficacy it means that different products they have been formulated in in the form of n n liposomal formulations and they are investigated for the liposomal formulation but there are some precautionary measurements which must be adopted over there 
due to environmental sensitivity and sometimes the drug become degrade. So in order to avoid the drug from degradation, if the drug is said to be formulated in the liposomal formulation, so I think it will be more and more safe. So for this, we are going to, uh, in a combination therapy, this uh, liposome can be given in a combination therapy that has been implied to the development process in order to achieve a better therapeutic efficacy. Look at here the structure of liposome. Liposome is cheaply composed of lipid bilayer. The first layer is hydropilic. So the head is hydropilic in nature which is soluble in water. The tail is hydrophobic in nature which is lipid soluble which cannot be dissolved or soluble in water. And this inside you can see this is the aqueous solutions. So liposomes mean it is cheaply composed of lipids with phosphate. You can see here this is the structure of phospholipids. And this chain consists of lipids with phosphate group and this is the structure of cholesterol. Generally the chemistry of cholesterol. So lipids can be defined as these are the group of naturally occurring molecules that include the fats, waxes, tyrol and fat soluble vitamins. Lipids are the heterogeneous group of compounds related to fatty acids. These are occurring molecules that include Pets, waxes, sterol and pet soluble vitamins, these are the major parts of the lipids. So the main biological function of lipids include the storage of energy, signaling and acting as a structural component of the cell membrane. Lipid is the major component of the cell membrane because the cell membrane is only soli and they are cheaply composed of cholesterol. If you can review the structure of the meninges, the triplet layer of the brain, so most of the drugs which are lipophilic in nature, so it will easily cross the blood brain barrier and it can reach to the targeted area. So in uh, different cases, while some drugs which are hydrophilic in nature, so it can be, the drug must be water soluble and it can be excreted from the body. What is phospholipid? Phospholipid is a class of lipid that is the, that is the major component of all the cell membranes, they can form a lipid bilayer. Lipid bilayer means two layer of the lipid and the structure of the phospholipid molecule generally consists of hydrophobic tail and hydrophilic head. It means the head region is composed of that is polar. The first portion is mean that the head is hydrophilic, the hy hydrophilic region which is polar in nature and the hydrophobic tail that is non-polar in nature. So, liposome is a spherical vesicle. You can see here the structure, this is just like spherical vesicles. And this spherical vessel, that is at least one lipid bilayer. There must be one lipid bilayer and aqueous pore must be present. So, in order to clear the fundamental concept of the lipids, the liposomes, it will must contain the lipid bilayer which is composed of two layer of the lipids. One is hydrophobic and the second one is hydrophilic. So the head region is hydrophilic in nature, water soluble and the tail is lipid soluble. So the liposome mean there are some criteria for the liposomes that these liposomes it must be spherical in nature, spherical vesicles in which at least there will be one lipid bilayer in aqueous this one is aqueous solution or aqueous core must be present. So the liposome can be used as a vehicle for the administration of nutrients and the pharmaceutical drug. So why liposomes is used as a drug delivery system? Now I am going to discuss the clinically approved liposomal drugs. What are the different uh, drugs which are clinically approved? by Food and Drug Administration. Look at here, 
The first one is liposomal impotericine B, which is available in a market by trade name, trade name Abelsets, which is actually antifungal agents used for the fungal infections. So it can be formulated in potericine B can be formulated in the form of liposomes. Liposomal empotericine B is available in a market by trade named embisome for fungal as well as it can be used for the fungal and the variety of infection like protozoal infections. Liposomal cytarabines it can be used for the malignant lymphomatous meningitis and they are available in a market by a trade name deposit. Liposomal another uh, agent which is available uh, in the market that is used against HIV, Human Immune Deficiency Syndrome related to Kaposi sarcoma that is liposomal downorubicines. So downorubicines are also available in liposomal formulation. So another one is liposomal doxorubicines. Doxorubicin, they are also available in a market by trade name Mycets. They can be, it can be given to the patient in a combination therapy with cyclophosphamide in the metastatic breast cancer. Another agent is liposomal IR IV vaccine that is available in a market by trade name Epixil, which is used against hepatitis A. Another one is liposomal IR IV vaccine that is in flex cells V and it is used against influenza. Liposomal marpine it is another agent which is clinically approved. Liposomal virtiforfines which are also available and liposomal marpine they are also used against post surgical analgesia. Liposomal Viritiporphine, they are also used against the age-related muscular degeneration, pathogenic myopia and ocular histoplasmosis. Mean, these are the different drugs. These are the different drugs you can say liposomal drugs which are clinically approved and they are used for the variety of the purposes. You can see here on my screen. So, for example, liposome PEG, folithionine, glycol, taxorubicines, and mycelar estradiol, they are also available, they are used for the menopausal therapy. Liposomal vincristine, they are also uh, available and liposomal drug, they are also clinically approved. It can be used for the against any acute lymphoblastic leukemia and melanoma. Liposome PAG, doxorubicine, they are also used against HIV related. Kaposi sarcoma, metastatic breast cancer, metastatic ovarian cancer, and multiple myeloma. These are the different ratios. For example, uh, these are the standard liposomal formulations. For you can see here the uh, DSPC um, ratio cholesterol 2 ratio 1. These are the standard formulations, standard liposomal formulations. DMPC and DPMG cholesterol 1 ratio 1, 1 ratio 1. So, please, these are actually the cost uh, encapsulation will depend on the type of liposome and the number of samples in the total immobiligram compound to be encapsulated. Inshallah, in my next lecture, we will discuss about the benefits and implication of liposomes and we will discuss about the different method of preparation of liposome, how liposomes they are formulated, how liposomes they are prepared. Thank you so much for watching my lecture. So, inshallah, I will continue this lecture from, from the, uh, inshallah, from the, uh, the next uh, topic related to uh, the next uh, lecture that is the benefit and implication of liposome, why liposome they are used for the variety of the purposes. Thank you so much for watching my lectures.